Hey everyone, today we'll be adding pagination to the categories table. You might notice a little different UI here on the categories page. You see that we have a search box in here, the sorting indicators on the columns. We have this drop down where we can select how many entries we want to show in the table. And if we scroll all the way down, we have the pagination bar with number of pages and the next and previous buttons showing the total entries and so on. Now, of course, the pagination or sorting or anything like that does not work yet. That's what we're going to be building. If I click on the pages, you see that the data does not change and the data actually displays all the rows that we have in the categories table. Even this drop down doesn't work either. So it's not showing only the 10 records from the database. It's showing everything that we have. I decided to use a third party library to display our data nicely in tables. It's called data tables and its website is datatables.net. It's a free library that you can use. One downside is that it has jQuery as a dependency. However, the good news is that we don't need to add jQuery as a direct dependency to our application. We can still initialize and work with data tables in JavaScript without jQuery. You can read more about the data tables and its options if you want to. And again, this is not a requirement. You can use a different table library if you want to, or you can build one from scratch. We'll be working on the backend side part of it to build the pagination and sorting filtering options into our queries. We'll also learn how to structure the response in uh, the proper way so that it's understandable for the specific data table library that we are using you can structure the response in any way you want for whatever table you will use so let's head over to the code base and go over some of the setup that i did behind the scenes first let's go over the package.json as you can see we added these two dependencies here one is the data tables.net and the other one is data tables.net dash dt now the second one is about styling of the data tables and this is the core data tables. Then if we inspect the app.scss we can see that we are importing the data table CSS file from the data tables.net dash dt. Then let's open the categories index.twig template and in here as you might remember within this table we were looping over the categories that we were getting from the controller and displaying the rows. Now instead of that we are displaying an empty table. We have a table with the ID of categories table. We're just showing the columns of the table and an empty body of the table. This table is populated dynamically from the server side via JavaScript. Then within the categories.js file we are importing the data table from the data tables.net and we're creating an object of data tables here passing in the selector of the table which is categories table in our case and we're passing in some options of the data table on how we want to initialize our data table. For example, we are setting the server side to true to basically fetch the data from the server side. The Ajax, we are specifying the URL where we need to fetch the data from, and that is category slash load. We're disabling the ability to sort by multiple columns, and then we're specifying or passing uh, some options for each individual column. So this basically just specifies the information about each column. The data attribute here just defines the key of that column that is returned within the response. So it's like, uh, think of it as a response being a JSON object and this being the key of where to pull the data from, from that response JSON or array. So we have the name column, the created at column and updated at column. And then the last column is not exactly uh, something that we pull the data from the server. Instead, we display custom HTML. We disable the sorting on that column and we're displaying the action buttons. And that is the edit and delete buttons. And that's pretty much it as far as the table object goes. It takes care of making the request to the server whenever some action happens on the table like user sorts the table by a column enters text in the search box or uses the pagination also one other thing that I made adjustment on is this part right here the click event is added to the categories table element because these edit and delete buttons are dynamically created and added 
to the DOM so having the on click events before the table has loaded would not work so instead we are adding the click events to the categories table which is the sort of a parent table of those buttons that get added dynamically and then within that click event we are detecting if it was the edit button or the delete button that was clicked and then we're performing the action appropriate for that button so if it was the edit button we fetch the category information and we open the edit category model if it was the delete button we ask the user to confirm and then delete the category one other thing that you might notice here is this table dot draw function call and this basically redraws the table or reloads the table to basically update the data this was the issue that we were having in the last lesson where when we were deleting the categories or making updates to the category name we had to refresh the page to see that update on the table now we don't need to do that anymore because we can just call this table dot draw from whenever we need to update the table and it will reload the table with the updated data and we do the same thing right here when we actually save the category with the new name so if the response is okay we then redraw or reload the table in fact uh, it's probably a good idea to do this here as well so we don't reload the table unnecessarily if the response was not okay for some reason all right so i know that this is a lot to take in and don't worry about it the pagination sorting and filtering that will build in on the back end should work for any front end as long as you hook it up properly and structure the response as needed now let's review the changes on the back end side first of course we have a new route within the web.php routes file we have this slash category slash load that the data table makes ajax request to and this is tied to the load method on the categories controller so if we inspect that we have the load method within this method we are simply fetching all the categories and are formatting them in the way that the data table can understand and draw the table properly now uh, we were fetching all the categories and calling this get all method within the index method if you remember from our previous lessons and we were passing it down to the index twig template we were looping over the categories array within that template and we were rendering the table there but now instead of doing that here we're doing it within the load method so to go over this quick we are getting the query parameters from the request then we're fetching all the categories and we are applying the array map function to sort of loop over each category object where we basically transform the category entity into uh, an array that the data table can understand these uh, keys here are what's mapped on the data table uh, within the javascript side if we go back to the categories.js and scroll up here this data attribute right here where we have the name created at and updated at that's the same keys as these right here so that's how the data table on the javascript knows what data to pull from where and under which column to display then once we have the categories properly formatted we are preparing a json response also that needs to be formatted in a way that the data table can understand we have the data property here which is set to the list of categories that are already formatted then we have this draw option that we will talk about in a minute and then we have records total and records filtered and that's basically the count of categories the difference between the records total and the records filtered is that records total is the total number of records before applying any filters uh, to it so it's like the count of all records within the database table and the records filtered is the total number of records after the filtering has been applied to the query now in here we're setting them to be the same count and that is okay because it uh, displays the text in a simple format so if we open the browser and scroll down here we have this simple text stating that it's showing 1 to 10 of 59 entries now if we change this to actually show the records filtered once we add some filtering to it so for now i'm just going to simulate it and assume that the total records are slightly more than the filtered records so we'll just simply add five here just to see the difference and let's go back and refresh scroll down and as you can see now the text changed to showing 1 to 10 or 59 entries filtered from 64 total entries so this is basically up to you how you want to show this i prefer the simple text of just showing this i don't care to see this extra uh, text right here so that's why i am setting uh, both of these uh, totals to be the same count 
Also, we can maybe add a micro optimization here since we're calling count twice. Why don't we put this into a variable and do total categories and do it like this and simply pass it here and pass it here as well. All right, so the draw parameter that I mentioned earlier, the reason we need to return this is because this draw parameter is actually a sequence number attached to a request and it gets incremented for every request. And the data table uses the sequence number to draw the correct page. So it's basically something that data table uses internally. All right, so let's get started and let's figure out how we can make this pagination work first and then we'll add the sorting and filtering later. To build pagination, we basically need to make use of the limit and offset options within the query. Luckily, Doctrine ORM Query Builder already has methods that we can use to set those options. So what we need to do is that we need to extract the limit and offset from the query parameters and pass them down to the method that will then apply it to the query. First, let's actually rename this uh, method because I don't think we'll ever need to select all the categories. So instead of calling this get all, we'll maybe call it something like get paginated categories or something like that. Now, instead of doing find all here, we'll need to basically get the query builder and apply the limit and offset. So uh, let's accept the limit and offset in here. So we'll do int start and int length and let's set this to query and instead of find all we'll do create query builder and let's set the alias to c and the methods to actually set the limit and offset are called set first result which is the start and if we inspect this method we see that this is the offset part then to set the limit we can do set max results and that is the length if we inspect this, we see that this is the limit part of the query. And finally, we can return the results. We can call get query and then call get result. Now let's go back to the controller and we need to pass these two parameters in this method. Now let's var dump the params array in here to see what query parameters we actually have so that we can see how we can extract the limit and offset values. So let's do var dump params let's open the browser let's refresh the page and we get this warning here which is okay because the proper json wasn't returned let's preview the response and as you can see we have the draw as one of the options then we have the columns as the other option which contains the list of columns that are coming from the front end with the name whether it's searchable sortable and so on if we keep scrolling down we see that we have the order which is the sorting information uh, on which column we are sorting what the direction is and this index right here is basically the index that corresponds to the index of the columns so the zero is zero right here so by default it's sorting by the name of the category in uh, ascending order then we have the start and length parameters here and these are the ones that we need. We also have the search parameter which contains the value that we're searching for and regular expression. We're not going to worry about the regex search for now. This is what we'll use for filtering. But for now let's uh, take one step at a time and let's extract the start and length and pass that down to our query. So let's go back to the controller and we can pass params start and params length let's remove the var dump and that should be good enough uh, we should also cast this to integers because these are strings by default and because we're using the strict types it's going to throw an error so let's cast them to integers later we may refactor this to use something like a dto but for now let's get it to work and we can clean it up later on let's open the browser let's refresh the page and seems like it worked because it has limited the display to just 10 rows but no additional pages are showing here which means that the pagination is not really working however the limit part and the offset is working as expected we can limit it to 25 records and we see that the table updates and shows the 25 records the reason why the pagination doesn't work is because of the total entries 
the count function that we have right here is counting the number of categories that are returned from the query and we're limiting the query and it's returning only 25 and therefore the table thinks that there are no more records than 25 that's why no further pages are displayed so basically we also need the total count without the offset and limit being added to the query so think of it as running a count query without having the limit and offset in the query now we can either build handling for that manually or we can use Doctrine ORM's built-in paginator class. So if we go back to the category service, we can create a new instance of the paginator class and then pass the query object as an argument there. So we'll get rid of this and instead of returning an array, we'll simply return new paginator instance and pass the query as an argument there. Let's change the return type here to paginator. And if we inspect the paginator class, we see that it implements countable and iterator aggregate interfaces. Countable basically allows us to uh, use count function on the paginator object. So uh, within the controller, this will still work even though the categories will no longer be an array, but instead it will be an object of the paginator instance. It will still work because this class implements the countable interface and provides implementation for the count method. This method basically figures out how to properly get the total count of the records. As you can see, it gets the counts query and gets the scalar result on that. And then the counts query resets the first and the max results. So it basically gets the count of records without applying the limit and offset to the query. The iterator aggregate interface we covered in one of the previous lessons. So if you need a refresher on what that is and how it works, please refer to that lesson. It basically allows us to iterate over the object as if it were an array. So now what I'm going to do in here is that I'm actually going to take this and put it into its own variable. So we'll do categories and set this to this. And then maybe we can set the array map function and extract this into its own variable. And then later, maybe we can extract it into a class or a method or something like that. But for now, maybe we can uh, call it transformer or formatter or something like that and set it to this. And then we can use the array map directly in the data part right here. So we can do array map. We'll pass the transformer here and we'll pass the categories. And now uh, the categories is an object and array map expects an array. So we need to get the iterator and cast this to an array. Let's open the browser now. Let's refresh the page. Everything still loads. Uh, it only shows the 10 records. And now the pagination seems to be working because now we have six pages and it also shows the total entries. As you can see, it shows that we have 59 categories in the database. Now, if we switch to the next page, we see that now the pagination works correctly because it is loading the new set of data. It's loading the second page of the categories. As you can see, now the text change here as well it says that it's showing 11 to 20 of 59 entries we can also use the next and previous buttons next goes to the third page previous goes back to the second page we can go to the last page here and the next button is disabled we can also increase the limit that we're displaying here instead of 10 we can set to 25 and as you can see the number of pages changed here and now we have only three pages so we can go to the first page second page and the third page which shows the remaining categories. Great, so we got the pagination working correctly. Now the next step is to add the sorting and filtering and maybe clean up the code a little bit. We'll do that in the next lesson because there are some security concerns that we need to discuss when doing searching and sorting. In the meanwhile, you can play around with this. You can play around with the data table options. If you want an exercise, maybe you can convert the new category uh, part to be Ajax instead of the regular form uh, submission. As you know, this basically submits a form and refreshes the page. And instead, maybe you can make it into an Ajax call. We've already done that with the edit and delete uh, actions, so it should be pretty straightforward to convert this into an Ajax call. I think it would be a great practice while you wait for the next lesson. So thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll see you in the next one.